social care system in England has developed in a piecemeal way over the last 60 years. Uh, it really can be traced back to 1948 when it was the bits left over after the setting up of the NHS in the 1946. And as a result of that, we've had a, a set of piecemeal changes over the decades and a system that really looks back to the poor law as the base on which it was organised. It's not modern, it's certainly not universal, it's very much a safety net, very much a last resort. And what the reforms are about is moving the model to one that is more universal, it's founded on a principle of promoting individual well-being and also focused on prevention and early intervention as being a key part of what should be of universally available. Well, in the Care and Support White Paper that came out in July 2012 and now in the Care Bill, um, we start with an organising principle for social care, which is the idea of well-being being the guiding factor when it comes to making decisions about people's care. And secondly, that prevention uh, and postponing uh, needs for care should be at the heart of the way in which the system works. Thirdly, that carers should have parity of esteem in the system. They should be treated equally alongside those they, they care for. Their well-being matters as much as the person they care for. And that's a very significant shift in the way things have been up until now. And then that the whole system in terms of state entitlements and state support should be simple. At the moment it's very complex, overlapping uh, entitlements and statutory duties on local authorities make it very hard to navigate. The new legislation, written in plain English, I commend people to have a look at it, uh, will make it a lot easier for people to navigate the system. The fact that we're, we're making these changes to the system against a backdrop of significant changes in the demography of our nation. We're an ageing society. It's a global phenomenon, but we're going to get there quicker than many. Um, and as a result of that, we will have pressures on family carers that we have to address, pressures on our labour markets in terms of our ability to be a competitive economy going forward, and a need to actually drive up the quality of the care that people receive, whether it's in their own homes or in care homes as well. I think what we can learn from the Japanese experience is that once you make a reform, you allow it to mature. You're flexible enough to adapt it and learn lessons if you need to, but you don't lift it up by the roots every few years and change it. Uh, and that's what we now need with the reforms that we're putting in place in England. We need the care legislation, which has been largely non-contentious across the parties, to have a chance to bed down and transform the way in which the services operate on the ground. And we need the funding reforms that take away those tail end risks, that catastrophic cost that families face at the moment, to also mature to actually promote a market for uh, care funding products.